And that is why when we first started getting into African content, that's why it kind of really tugged at my heart. Because when you look at the dates of their independence, our parents were born, and many times, before those dates. So this is recent history. What's good, y'all? It's the Doom Chefs React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today we're back with another American reaction. Mm -hmm. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and, and we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 100K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Greetings. My name is Noel Morgan. I was born in Falmouth, Jamaica, on the North Coast. Over the last 25 years, I've been visiting Africa. I'm mainly based in Ghana. And for the last 10 years of the 25 years, I've been, I've been living in Ghana for an approximately eight, nine months per year. And the reason why I love Ghana so much, the first time I went to Ghana, the first thing that attracted me was the vegetation. You see papaya trees, you'd see guava trees, you'd see cassava and things like that. And, and if you know why he said that, like if you know about how Jamaicans eat, mm -hmm. you will understand why he yes. said that. So that's a that's fine that yes. he even mentioned that. Yes. How to mingle the Ghanaian people, that's how to hear words that we use in Jamaica, like Mise, Wayne Day, and so forth. And then um, I started to hear names that we used to call people in Jamaica, and we think they were nicknames or aliases. Kweko, Kojo, Taki. Then I started to realize these names were related to the days that a male were born or a female were born. Mm. And when I started to talk to Ghanaian people, I started to see the love. They started to tell you, you're, you're also an African because they can see the behavior. We can see the similarity in look, looking alike. And then when I started to go wrong with the Ghanaian people, then I said, yes, I'm a Jamaican. I remember once I went to a marketplace to buy what they call cola nut. In Jamaica, we call it busy. So after I bought the nut, the, the lady said to me, do you know this thing? I said, yes, but only in Jamaica we call it busy. She said, oh, you're an African then, because we call it busy here also. Then when I look again at the mountainside and the homes we built in Jamaica, then like Warwicka Hill, then I go to a bully, I see the same kind of structure, the same kind of house built the same way, the same. A matter of fact, I think we have the same liking as the people. The things we love, they do love too. So therefore, the interaction with Ghanaian people and yourself will make you know that you have an, you're an extract of that part of Africa, West yeah. Africa, are Ghanaian people, mm -hmm. so to speak. So therefore, being saying an African, it's something that you can be proud of. Be, all right <laughs> um you heard it let's talk about that my first main attraction was that he noticed the vegeta the vegetation mm -hmm. um we have did a video recently in jamaica of a gentleman and it was eating the food and the food is just so clean they pick it yeah, they grow yeah. it um they harvest it and they barely um eat like meats if i'm not mistaken oh that was the rest of people oh yeah, that was just so that pork. still pass. Does that still pass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a way, it does. So yeah, and it just goes to show that that's what he was highly interested in, and that's what brought me, um, brought my attention to what he was saying. Yeah, because if he was to come to the United States, he wouldn't see so much of that. Right, right, if right. If any, depending I think on where he's going, you he, know, he would have a big taste difference. Yeah, right? he would probably know yeah. something is yeah. in the food almost. Yeah, because we have a lot of GMOs in our food, so ingredients um, is everywhere, yeah, like and preservatives. So mm -hmm. basically, when he went to Ghana, he was at home. You know, um, he saw a lot of similarities. The the people. I feel like when we talk about the diaspora, people in the Caribbean, although they have made the Caribbean their home, just like we've made the Americas our home, right? They have kept, like, the heritage from Africa more than we have. And that's something that I have not been able to really 
understand why. Like right. through our outside research, I have not been able to understand why. You know, it's just a stop on the boat, from the boat. You know, yeah. so I, I, I don't know, but I love that he was able to go to Ghana and see the differences there and feel at home. So my question to you is: In Jamaica, how do you guys name your children? Because he said that... It's similar in that area, Yeah, too. he was able to see how they named their children. And the names that they... He said in Jamaica, it was their nicknames, though. So I would, I would love to know that. Like, yeah. how do y'all name your children in Jamaica? It is said that most of the original inhabitants of Jamaica were from Ghana. And so I'm sure we have so much in common. The very first president of Ghana is Kwame Nkrumah, and his daughter, Samia, joins us now. And we're going to talk about that cultural link. Good morning. Welcome Good to Smile morning. Jamaica. Good Before morning. we begin, I want to extend our condolences to the people in Atomic Junction and speed recovery to those who were injured recently. Thank you. Um, Thank you. You're here. You are guest speaker at the launch of the reparations center, center. at the University of how, the West Indies. How mm. important is reparations coming from the African side? I mean, we have a we have I a story. How important is it for you as a Ghanaian? Yes, and your story is our story right. uh, because it all started in the continent, mm -hmm. your true home, by the way, because that's where all African people belong. Um, so we were separated um, arbitrarily, you know, artificially. Uh, but so, and we believe that Africans are in different parts of the world. And one day, I know one day, we are going to come together to do good things for our people. You know, I think we, believe we must somehow reverse the consequences of those years of slavery, colonialism, and, and now this, we call it balkanization. Like African people, we were divided. So we are divided into small states. We are divided into small countries. So it's difficult for mm. us to cope. How can small economies manage in today's world? How can a small country like Ghana or Jamaica how can you negotiate on equal terms with big, big blocks, China, India, the EU, the US? So we really are the same people. And reparation is a very, very important and timely question. Uh, because when we do more research into that, we'll go back and look into our uh, past, the past 500 or so centuries. What happened to Africans? What were the consequences of those, um, um, uh, let's say, experiences? But from our own perspective, the important thing is that we have to write our history. Because as you write your history, you actually make it your own, your experience. Yeah. So it is not just important because of what will happen, but you need to go back look at your history, write it, present it to your people. And if injustice has been meted out to you, as we know it has... Justice must be served. Have, yes, and you have to speak out. Yeah. You know, our young people must know what happened and how, and that the consequences are still with us and today. In your response to that question, you asked a number of questions yourself. In your keynote speech, did you answer those questions? In a nutshell, what did you tell the audience? That... Africa is indivisible. The reason I'm here is that we are the same people. I want young people to know that Kwame Nkrumah, or Sajifu Kwame Nkrumah as we call him, who led our country to independence, was mostly inspired, and in his own words, he was inspired by Marcus Garvey's Back to right, Africa right, right. campaign. Wow. Like so like dog, the yeah. people of this country, your history, your forefathers, were instrumental in rekindling the spirit of African nationalism that helped many of our leaders, you know, to garner that enthusiasm to fight for independence. Mm -hmm. So Kwame Nkrumah said it. And that is why when we first started getting into African content, that's why it kind of really tugged at my heart. Because when you look at the dates of their independence, 
our parents were born in many times before those dates. So this is recent history. It is very recent. This is not that that long ago. And people need to know that. It's talking right. And for for her to say that Marcus Garvey influential Marcus Garvey influenced the African leaders to fight for their independence. Marcus he, he was big. He was big. It took someone from the land, taken from the land, a descendant who who spearheaded the go back to Africa movement to give the people strength through words to fight for their independence like man that's just y'all y'all see the the wheels turning <laughs> <laughs> that is powerful it is he wrote it in his autobiography of all the literature he read and this is a man who read a lot. He wrote 14 books. He's a philosopher, politician. He was voted as the African of the millennium. He was head of state. I mean, so when someone like that writes or speaks, you listen. He said of all the literature he read, it was the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey that had the greatest influence on him. His wow. daughter, Samia, was the first female to, to run a major political party. In, in Ghana, what's happening now with 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 you? Um, yes, uh, yes. I returned home 2007, eight to enter active politics. I mean, I've always been interested in politics, but from the sidelines and outside my country, we've had an interesting history, as you know. You know, there was the illegal overthrow of Kwame Nkrumah's government. We were uprooted, separated from the family. Anyway, reading his books and you know all this, these uh, that feeling that you know I need to go back home and make my contribution uh, brought me back home. Entered active politics. Um, I was an MP for the Convention People's Party. That's a small party, but it took its name from the same party uh, Kwame Nkrumah founded in, uh, uh, before independence. And, and I uh, want to mention that we get a lot of comments um, sometimes where people be like that. You guys shouldn't be listening to what people say on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, these are like leaders. You know what I'm saying? Majority of these people that we check out be leaders. The guys that you guys uh, sent to us, and they have written books, and they have people that have written books, and they people be like, you guys need to just go back uh, to Africa right. and go do your research on your own and stop reading the books because that's not going to help you. And right. I feel like that's not helping nobody at all when you right. tell somebody that because right. if you know of a person as a leader and they have influential words that have moved mass numbers of people just to do different things in the societies, those books today are still as important and still as powerful right. as it was when they were uh, once written. Right, and her dad is history. Facts. So when people say things like that, it's kind of defeating the purpose of the reason we're doing this type of content and we're not just doing this type of content just for africa mm. we're doing this type of content for the world there's a lot that we don't know of course this directly relates to us and our people so we're going to have more people to send in more requests about it and never think that the demoshets are not doing research and making moves outside of youtube okay the focus of the channel is a reaction right right we're not only having a reaction, but we are bringing people around the world together. Okay? So if Believe you want to be on that not. train, get yeah. on. Became the chairman or leader of that party. Uh, and yes, and uh, um, I tried to become presidential candidate of that party. Um, I was not successful about a year ago. Uh, but we we never give up. We have to keep on trying. Uh, and Kumarism is something when we go on your party's website, it, you know, it lists all of the things that you believe in, and, and Kumarism is one of it. Garveyism here. One of the things is Africa for Africans, and that vision you articulated. How much closer are we to that vision as we see all that's happening with countries within the continent? Are people? country still saying we have to develop on our own or are we collectively as a continent trying to move forward yes you see of course there's a disconnect yes. between the political establishment mm. and the people 
the people know they are one. I mean, if you see how our borders are, you know, people are always moving. Um, the same ethnic group is split between two or three countries. That is, we, we know it. We know it. And if you explain to the people the benefits of being one country, one nation, imagine if 1.2 billion people spoke with one voice. United States of Africa. Can you imagine the strength and power and clouds Africans will have in the world, in world affairs today? Mm -hmm. So if that hasn't happened, it's not the people. It must be for another reason. Um, and Kwame Nkrumah used to say, I mean, new colonialism, which means basically being exploited, dominated by others for uh, to develop others other countries rather than our own the greatest instrument Kwame Nkrumah used to say of of new colonialism is to divide us mm -hmm. so yeah. within our own countries we are divided different political parties different this different views within the continent we are divided mm -hmm. even the fact that the Afri um, African states are divided from Caribbean states that's absurd you yeah. know we are the, the, what, what, what kind of lens does being in exile bring to you, Samira? In 1966, your, your family yes. had, was separated. Um, you're in Egypt. That's Kwame right. Was, um, in, was in Guinea. Staying on the outside, seeing your country, what kind of lens does it give you now to be in it and to make yes. changes? Um, you know, our mother was Egyptian, yes. Yeah. So we even though we left Ghana but we stayed in Africa mm -hmm. we went to be in Egypt and and I think that has really that in retrospect I know the circumstances weren't good but it's a great plus because it makes you see the whole continent as one um, and um, it, it's going back even, you know it made me realize that yes we we have if you know Egypt well if you've been taking a cruise down the Nile to the Valley of the Kings in the south the Nubia Nubians are black. Egypt was a black civilization before the invasions, you know? Egypt is Africa, yeah. you know? We have to go. Great to meet you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Your son's name is Kwame. That's right. My son's name is Kwame, and Great. actually I call him Nkrumah, and yes. I named him because of your father. Oh, yes. wow. Great yes. to meet you. Thank you very much. He was the Thank first you. president of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah, but this is his daughter, and hopefully um, soon to be another president of Ghana, uh, Samia Nkrumah. Still to come, promotion. Ah. That is beautiful. Still influenced. Yes, that was a good Man. discussion. It was eye opener for me. It was. It, it for just me put as me well. on the edge of my seat and just made me get like, you guys know we get to do a lot of pauses, and I felt like this was a little pause. Mm -hmm. We didn't do too many, um, but it was a, uh, it was very knowledgeable. Very yes. knowledgeable. I love how you know they they started off with the historian mm -hmm. to share you know his observa observations and then moving to Ghana. Um, you know, just sharing the similarities. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. We, we, we have to open up the floor for you guys. Facts. See what you guys are thinking. I would love Especially, to hear. Especially, yes, our Jamaicans and, and Ghanaians. We would love to hear what you guys have to say about this. Yeah. So, we hope you guys enjoy this video with us. Like this video. Subscribe. Turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like support the channel that way. As well as our join feature to become a VIP member of the channel. Send in your reaction request through our description box below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.